Hello and welcome to Bangalore International Center's very own podcast BIC Talks. Bangalore International Center is a platform for informed conversations, exchange of ideas and a space for arts and culture. BIC Talks brings the essence of all that the physical space stands for and more to your doorstep. Diatoms are fascinating charismatic microscopic creatures that exist across the world's water bodies. In India, the pioneering work on diatoms was done by Hemendra Kumar Prithviraj Gandhi or H.P. Gandhi. Born in 1920, H.P. Gandhi described over 300 species of diatoms over his career as a college lecturer, all without a rupee of research support or peer recognition from his fellow researchers in India. Not just that, but much of his work and his legacy was almost lost till the early 2000s. Hi, I'm Pavan Srinath and welcome to BIC Talks. Karthik Bala joins me on the podcast this episode to talk about the fascinating world of diatoms, the monumental work of H.P. Gandhi and how it lives on today. Dr. Karthik Balakrishnan is a diatomist and a scientist at the Agarkar Research Institute in Pune. Hi Karthik, welcome to BIC Talks. Hi Pawan, thanks for inviting me here. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. And Karthik, we are here to talk about the life and work of this amazing scientist in india hp gandhi who was born 100 years ago to this year right he was born in 1920 and he worked on these fascinating creatures called diatoms so before we talk about hp gandhi i mean diatoms are also something that you work on can you tell us about what these diatoms are diatoms are a group of algae so algae is very common term we study in even 6th standard 7th standard textbooks even we see everywhere in the particularly in bangalore lakes if we see like you know it's a green color floating things everywhere so there are different types of algae are there which call green algae red algae brown algae golden brown algae as the name suggest there are different groups of algae have different colors which mainly come from their pigments so different algae do photosynthesis at different range of lights so they have different color pigments so the name so one of the algae are golden brown algae or else called it's diatoms they are one of the species rich groups as on today we know 20 25000 species prediction says there are more than 1 million species are there wow so diatoms are there everywhere like algae so therefore they live in water primarily so they are primarily aquatic organisms so as such they live in lakes rivers streams estuaries and seas and oceans and sometimes even in the arctic and antarctic region also you have ice there are diatoms living inside the ice until very recently people thought that you know diatoms are aquatic organism but diatoms also live in semi aquatic habitats semi aquatic means there is a waterfalls when the waterfall there is a big spray zone is there like you know it create a big uh, mist kind of thing so surrounding rocks and trees they get moisture from those mist and diatom grow in the semi aquatic habitat also and there are some diatom which also grow completely in dried uh, soils even in desert soils so at 40 degree 45 degree also we can find diatoms they are remarkably cosmopolitan then right in where all they live and how all they function so diatoms are cosmopolitan in distribution they are in all continents sea everywhere there but interestingly the environment decides what kind of diatom has to be there in that particular environment so our entire earth is covered by most of the part by ocean but we don't get same set of diatom across the all places based on the temperature based on the nutrient availability the diatom composition changes completely there are in tropical oceans there are different set of diatoms in temperate or like polar oceans there are different set of diatoms and if we take two waterfalls so imagine we have one waterfalls in western ghats and we have another one waterfalls say like in sikkim or like arunachal pradesh same habitat we get a completely different set of diatom species they are exclusive to environment and they are also endemic 
say for example when i say like endemic means it's restricted to particular geographic region so like you know whatever the factors which decides the big animals and plants the same factors decides these tiny creatures diatoms when we look at them under a microscope or something one can you give us a sense of how large they are and i know that there are different species so the sizes must have a range and also why they look the way that they look i mean we've seen other algae which look like algae right or look like our textbook ideas of what an algae should be there'll be you know some chlorophyll somewhere they look like cells of some types whether plant like or animal like but diatoms look unearthly so uh, diatoms are microscopic we need a microscope to look into diatom we don't need a high fund uh, microscope a normal school microscope even these days we also use there is something called fold scope which is uh, invented by manu prakash and his team from stanford which is like a pocket microscope we use that also to check immediately in the field whether the diatoms are there or not in the sample so size means like they are in few microns some diatoms are like 2 3 microns and then it goes up to 150 200 micron size usually we get like around 40 to 100 microns is the typical size some are like you know really large huge diatoms when i say huge for me 200 micron is huge <laughs> so 200 microns would be 0.2 mm right yeah exactly so even like microscopes which have what 50x magnification 100x that's more than enough for you to at least get started yeah 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 our school microscope have 10x 40x and 100x and our ips have 10x so 10x we means 10 into 10 we can see 100 time big 40 into 10 400 time big 100 into 10 1000 time big so this is more than enough to see diatoms and i just want to tell here a lot of great work on diatom across the globe comes with this microscopes so people before like 1960s 70s they never used uh, the scanning electron microscope or things like that to see the microorganism per se uh, so they used uh, this simple compound microscope coming back to the second part of questions why they look amazingly different diatoms are also extremely charismatic when we look into the like under the microscope so because diatoms are made up of silica diatoms have a silica cell wall and in each species have its own pattern so those patterns are used as identification guide by the diatom taxonomist and ecologist from professor gandhi who is the first diatomist i met in my life and then my postdoctoral supervisor pat kosselik from colorado or like i had one more col- collaborator paul hamilton from canada or like south africa jonathan taylor <laughs> so they all got into diatom because they accidentally or somehow they saw this one and then they were like wow so i'm going to look into more into this so they were struck by curiosity and wonder at how they look yeah 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 so this is you know something very important thing like when when we give a gift to many kids we just buy some toys and things like that and like you know this a simple microscope which will be like you know hardly like 3000 4000 rupees which can change a lot of people's <laughs> lives then their the way they look into the life itself nowadays i think full scope is also it's hardly 2000 rupees which is available in india in in gubi labs website or in amazon also you get the full scope i think these are wonderful gift it will make kids to drive towards curiosity absolutely so karthik coming back to the diatom and you mentioned that their walls are made of silica right which is silicon and oxygen typical algae or other plants would have cell walls made of cellulose right which would give them some strength but not that much diversity in the structure because cellulose is still not a crystalline thing but is it because they use silica that they can come up with all these fanciful kinds of rod shapes and star shapes and these beautiful structures that we see in various diatoms yeah algae are like usually made up of cellulose and are like those kind of things but some group of algae they kind of managed to utilize the silica the theory says goes back and says like you know most of the life formed in the origin is in the marine environment and then they started coming towards the land so they have to go through a brackish environment and then fresh water and then to the land for example before diatom the previous version of diatoms were known as ur diatom ur diatom 
and they don't have this rigid silica cell wall and they are going through the infection from other you know bacteria or fungal infection something like that so they over time over thousands and thousands of years they manage to make this silica cell wall it's kind of teeth to protect themselves there is another one group of algae which is also make silica cell wall it's called dinoflagellates these are like you know sister groups so they both can just in terms of usage of silica i mean not evolutionarily so wherever i go i tell this like you know almost roughly 50 percentage of oxygen comes from algae only and in that 25 percent comes from diatom so diatom contribute for 25 percent of global oxygen production so usually there is a school books everywhere they have this notion of telling that you know plant makes the trees and things makes oxygen of course they also make but you know we have so much ocean so there are so much aquatic organisms particularly algae they are in million million zillion individuals are there out so they are working hard to make oxygen for us like we think of a rainforest as a lung right for the earth that may not be false but it's our oceans and a microscopic plant-like life form we see a lot of boats rising tree for carbon sequestration and things like that which will take some time eventually tree will five year ten year down the line tree will become big and then they can fix uh, carbon dioxide and produce oxygen but if we save our lake if we save our rivers they are already doing this wonderful service ecosystem service without any charges imagine like you know if we have to pay for the oxygen the items will be the m- most richest organism <laughs> we can protect our forest we we make new forest we make uh, you know social forestry scheme and all we make new plantation everything is fine but in the same time we can save our lakes they, because imagine in a small neighborhood if we have a small pond or lake if we keep the water clean imagine like you know there is so much oxygen produced and then your carbon dioxide which you generate in that neighborhood is like you know sequestered in that small pond itself while these are fascinating creatures clearly they're spread across everywhere you said that they also contribute so heavily to global oxygen supply so beyond sort of academic curiosity and you know detailed work on various types of species that exist on the earth do you think the study of diatoms can also be linked more directly to applications of science in various ways diatoms can make up to 80 percent of their body weight uh, lipids the fatty acids so they are a good source for biofuels like biodiesel what we say diatoms are also the original producer of omega 3 fatty acids which we take through a cod liver f- f- fish we take which is like originally manufactured by diatoms this fish eat them and then they store the oil in them so we take the omega-3 fatty acid so it's a good source of vegetarian omega-3 fatty acid and then it's like we are not we are getting it from the original manufacturer, not through the dealer. Diatoms are used as a, in biomedical applications. They are used in like targeted drug delivery. Diatoms are also used in many medic biomedical applications for targeted drug delivery and in tissue engineering, in bone tissue engineering. Diatom silicas are used in bone tissue engineering. Diatoms are also used in forensics. To, to know where this particular crime happened. It's a altogether a different field. You know, I might have even seen some TV show which might have featured diatoms. I think it was in the show Castle. Yeah, I recently saw some, some episodes in Prime. There is a, a series of detective stories where they use diatoms as a, one of the clue for um, identifying. But like it's a known, even in India also, it's done in this, the test called diatom test to confirm the death by drowning. The only test available as on today is diatom. If a person jump into a water body and they struggle, they drink a lot of water, diatom gets in, so it goes to their lungs and heart and other parts of body. So if the diatoms are there, that means that person was alive when they came in contact with the water bodies. So in the other case, they can kill somebody and throw the body in the in a water body, a lake or a river. So that time it's called as negative. The will not get diatoms will not get into more in into the body. So that's commonly used uh, thing. There is something called diatomaceous earth. So some point of time, whatever today land, they were not land 
before there might be ocean and whatever ocean today that might be land like some few hundred thousand years before so at one point of time there were ocean there were diatoms living at that point of time when they become land or like you know there were like mountains of dead diatom under the ocean even today over time they become dead mountains of diatoms it's just silica so they remain like that forever so it sort of feels like sand right yeah they feels like sand there are good quality of diatomaceous earth in in many parts of the world like china south africa in many places in europe in california diatomaceous earth are used as a industrial filter materials and then uh, they have wide range of application in fact few days before we were all excited about the nobel prize right the nobel prize comes from the nobel foundation the nobel foundation have some money so all this money comes from diatom can you believe this i'll tell you how it came so alfred nobel invented this dynamite he used diatomaceous earth to put the ammonia nitrate and so it become a more stable to transport even compared to the liquid condition this diatoms have a lot of pores minute pores so when you cut a diatomaceous earth like in a square shape or a round shape like for example if, if we go to coastal karnataka or kerala we will see this um, laterite is getting cut into bricks the rocks so diatomaceous earth also like when we cut into brick and then fill this pores with this liquid explosive so it's easy to transport so even though alfred nobel invented this for a constructive purpose many people started using this for you know during the war and lot of people got killed and alfred nobel felt very bad and he used all the money which came from dynamite by selling the dynamite or put on this foundation for making this uh, nobel foundation and the rest is the history wow so diatoms are everywhere not just around us but also in various aspects of our history so karthik i want to come to how you sort of got into diatoms and give us a glimpse of the man who was hp gandhi and how he is now known to be like the father of diatom studies in uh, india i did my masters in environmental science and then i came to center for ecological sciences dr t v ramchandra and professor n v joshi to work on their project Indian Institute of Science Bangalore so my project is to study the water chemistry of four rivers in uh, Uttar Kannada district like Sharavathi Agnashni Bedthi Kali these four rivers was so i used to go there and collect every month the water and get it to bangalore and test this water and that was my main project so my bachelor's were in micro- microbiology so i was little bit curious about what is this brown things growing on the the rock when we collect water from the streams and rivers so i bring this samples and then i bring some rock and then you know scratch them and then observe under the microscope so i saw this amazingly beautiful colors and designs and then uh, then i thought like you know there must be something really interesting then i came to know these are diatoms at that time there is no algologist or like you call like phycologist or diatomist in bangalore or anywhere so i found professor s v hosmani in mysore university in uh, in mysore so i took the samples to him and then i asked him he said like these are diatoms and then he gave some papers so with this paper you can identify diatoms so this only source in to identify the diatoms what i get in my samples is the papers there is no particular books or anything is there not there so when i was searching for literature i came across this name very very often like you know in india we have 50 60 papers on diatom so 30 was by h p gandhi so one paper says like oh his address is darwad the other paper says uh, is in mumbai the other paper says rajkot other paper say baroda and then one paper say ahmedabad and then like you know almost every other paper have a different affiliation so i am not able to Uh, get in touch with him there is no email or anything like that this this was happening in 2005 6 around that time i mean you also been sharing uh, information about hp gandhi on twitter and elsewhere so so tell us a little about who was this person what was he working on and how was he working in so many different places yeah so <laughs> what happened in uh, 2005 or 6 i think so 
I am unable to identify my diatom. So now I need somebody to he help me to you know this is how these are the species, these are the species. So I have so much hundreds of samples with me. I have slides. I need somebody. So I decided that you know if I meet Gandhi, he had written all this paper. So he obviously he knows all these things. So he is the only savior for me. And I search for this. Uh, okay, there is a Karnataka College in Darwad. So this is one address. So I search. There is no nothing called Karnataka College. It's it become a Karnataka University later. And the same thing with like Rajaram College, Kolapur. He worked there. So I call that call. I find out the number from internet and I call like you know, can you connect to botany department? And then nobody knows who is Gandhi, whatever. Is. One paper I got. This paper reads like my experiments with Indian guides and Indian reviewers. And this sounds like a home address. It's a C one by something and Baxi building in Junagadh. So thanks to BSNL. So they used to. We were this generation where we even saw this yellow pages, right? That that is a time when the yellow pages are getting converted into this online database. If you put a number, you know the address, or if you put an address or name, you can find out. So then I went to this Gujarat circle of BSNL website and then put HP Gandhi. There was I think some twelve Gandhi in that address in in that uh, vicinity or somewhere. So I call every Gandhi. Even now, my Hindi is very bad, and I don't speak Gujarati. I that point I know only English and Kannada and Tamil. So I somehow manage, and then one they will like you know nobody is like that. Or they they will tell something in Gujarati. I don't know what it is. So in one call, I said like I am P H Gandhi speaking. I know I said I want to talk to H P Gandhi. So he said like H P Gandhi. We, he will not be able to come here and speak. So what do you want to like you know I want to talk about and diatoms like you know. Maybe better you. Why don't you come down to Junagadh? You can you can talk to him. I was like, wow. So how can like you know now I have to go to Junagadh? Like I just find out like you know what are the trains uh, which goes to Junagadh. And then I went and they were like you know excellent hospitality. They said like you know we we cannot accommodate you here. You can stay in the nearby lodge, but you are our guest. So then I went and I met I met Gandhi. So I am under the impression that I am going to, you know, get all my taxa identified, all my species identified. So I am going with a computer with all the images, like thousands of images stored in it. And I went there. I was like, shocked to uh, like anything because he is in a bedridden condition. H. P. Gandhi must have been what eighty five, eighty six around this time, right? Yeah, yeah, around that time. They said like he cannot even talk properly because. You know he's having Alzheimer. He's having a lot of bone complications and things like he cannot sit also by himself. My problem is who will identify my items now. So then I was trying to talk to him and he was not talking. And then I went to his home next day. Then I had a hope that you know he will identify. I went with computer and then opened my computer sitting next to him. And then okay he's not talking. Nothing is happening. Then I was talking to his son. I asked him that you know Gandhi have did a great job of you know describing so many three hundred I think three hundred species he described around three hundred species these slides are need to be preserved so when I was talking to him my computer is next to uh, Gandhi's bed so my screen saver started coming this these are like my images the microscopic images and he started telling something so his granddaughter she told that you know. Grandfather started talking something, so they all went and they all asking him that you know, uh, what are you talking? What are you talking? They were not able to figure out what he's saying. So then, when I peeped in, then I saw when my images moves every image, he's telling the name of that particular species. They said like you know he did not speak for uh, many years. So today is the time he started speaking. Then after the next day, he started telling, narrating his story. So you know, he was he was born in Pradapgad. It was then the Bombay presidency, starting from Rajasthan till Darwad, Hubli Darwad. So it's a old Bombay presidency. So he was born in Pradapgad, and then he went to Mumbai to study with very famous uh, algaologist of that time dr gonzales that time i think it was uh, institute of science in mumbai so he studied uh, algae there and he had a lot of difference of opinion with uh, his guide and then 
he published uh, this diatoms of bombay and salset island three paper amazing paper it, this paper came in 1952 53 54 it was like you know monumental work at that time he he did this in during the independence and it got published in 52 53 54 then he got the job in i think it's a twitter or lecturer job in college so he said that you know he used to he is this very straightforward person he had very passionate about teaching and he don't encourage student to go for a private or like you know tuition thing so this always brought him into trouble with his seniors and the principals and things like that so this lead to frequent transfer from bombay he got transferred to darwad then kolhapur again to darwad and then in near bombay and then during the state uh, bifurcation was happening he was in the present day gujarat so then he got settled in gujarat in gujarat he was in baroda amdavad and then finally he retired as a principal as a, of a college in junagadh jj uh, college he retired as so he said like they transferred me to punish me but i was lucky enough to go across all these places and uh, i uh, whenever we go for botanical excursion with my students i make sure that i have enough bottles to collect diatoms so that's why if you see his northern most paper he have paper from uh, rajasthan and his southern most paper is he he collected samples from jok falls and sagar in karnataka so he said like you know i was uh, lucky enough to go across all these places and collect diatoms and and throughout he was a college lecturer right he was not a professor with a research mandate at any point in his career he was a college lecturer all his life when he retired he retired as a principal and he did not have even a single rupee funding to do research so he will be doing teaching for 5 days and 2 days he will not even have his food he will be just sitting in the microscope his wife was mentioning sometime they have to open the door slowly and keep the food and take the previous food's plate sometimes the previous food will be like that only it will be you will be stilling uh, under the observing something under the microscope or writing something but thing is without anybody's help or any thing he had developed a network you know in the entire history the great diatomist from germany he had communication with hooster he had communication with uh, ruth patrick from philadelphia he had communication with patrick reimer from again academy of sciences in philadelphia and professor kobe asi from japan he he was uh, literally talking to you know the best diatomist in the world like cholnoki from africa so th- all these people whatever the name i have mentioned they were authority on that particular geography like kobayashi is the name of japanese diatom cholnoki is the is the name of african diatom patrick and reimer was like uh, north american an entire european diatom was done by hosted so he was in touch with these people and he also mentioned that you know he don't have enough money to buy this diatom books so what he will do that those time when you publish a paper you get reprints from the journals so he used to write to all big diatomists that you know here with i am attaching my paper so please send me your papers so they sign and then send the, the paper so those uh, archives are there and interesting thing some of the books what he will do is he will borrow the book from them and he will take a photo using the camera he he is a versatile person like you know he is a carpenter he is a mechanic he is electrician you know you name it he is a clock mechanic he is certified radio mechanic he is a very good painter he is a electrician <laughs> and he is a excellent tailor i i'm sure i'm missing so many other things here um so all this he did with no funding no institutional support but develop his own personal network with the top scholars across the world and i'm guessing that people and researchers in universities in india paid him no due right he mentioned at one place like you know he went for some meeting somebody called him like you know xob swala which referring to his salary so that time all this he once said like you know all this big association and uh, 
whatever this academy what all these things are like by university people they only occupy this so you know they don't give due respect at one point of time he stopped publishing in indian journal and after that he never published in indian journal he published only in like foreign journals which have like you know amazing review system peer review system and most of the time he said about you know he put all his life into it like you know he did not have fun on saturday sunday he just looked at item he was so passionate about what he was doing so and after doing he didn't do he was not doing this for you know sake of some recognition or anything he is just doing for out of his interest but if he got some recognition in his lifetime it would have been like you know really great support like for example who said the german diatomist he was a school teacher so the local authorities and people they saw him doing great thing so they they accepted him from teaching and they paid him to do what he was doing for diatom study that's why he become a world authority of diatom he described 1400 species with support of like local city and even local city paid to curate his uh, samples and slides so gandhi samples was like you know when i met him in like you know mid 2000 he was already in bed written but he packed all his samples he packed with so meticulously and arranged in in a particular manner you know in a sequence or day of collection from 1947 till 1990 so he packed and then there was a notes associated with that after speaking to his family members and all like his his sons were so good like they all understand father's work and importance of work then at one point of time gandhi called his sons and then told like you know whatever i have give it to him so he gave all his samples and collections everything so i have all the samples and his slides everything with me and part of this is with indian stuff science there and so you were pretty much the first then researcher to go and meet him and talk to him about his work well after his retirement when he had crossed the 80s right uh, yeah that time he was like 80 plus and then i was so lucky enough that you know maybe at that time i was like you know blind interest and after that fortunately dr hp gandhi passed away not too long after right not too long ago after some time he passed away then we had one meeting here at iic so we invited their family their family came and then they shared their experience with their father and because of all this thing, whatever happening in the science field so he discouraged his children from taking science so they all went to engineering or pharmacy and one of them working in a gujarat things state government and things like that so they were like you know we our father was not very happy about the indian science system as such so he did not encourage us to his, his elder son i think is now maybe 50 plus he was saying that he i i have helped him in making slides and all even in one of the paper gandhi had mentioned his uh, son for uh, helping him in preparing slides so all this slide preparation everything happens at his home only uh, gene stromer he was my academic grandfather once i met him in michigan he told like he know gandhi because gandhi used to write christmas greeting to him and then requesting him for a new year or a christmas gift of Uh, this diatom mountain this is a special chemical for making diatom slide so there that mountain is not available in india so you know he used to request him so gene stromer was saying that uh, you know i used to send him this mountain every year and then he write a very big thanks letter for sending this mountain and how helpful this would be for his research gandhi was saying he used to go to the doctor's clinic to collect the the injection bottles to collect samples so he used to go to this um, fruit stalls where this apple and all come in this box like this uh, a wooden box kind of thing he used to bring the those boxes to make slide box because with that you know very small salary of a college teacher he needed to manage his family and also his research interest and then he used to go to a printing press to collect the paper which he used for one sided for uh, writing and making a rough copy of drawing of diatoms 
you know, when I first got in touch and when we were first planning this episode, I knew that you were working on diatoms and that you had immense respect for H.P. Gandhi's work and had spoken about all the trials and tribulations that he had gone through to do his seminal work. What I did not know was how you were also intimately involved with sort of bringing H.P. Gandhi's work in more ways than one to the 21st century. So, do you feel like after some of this, after his archives also came to IISC and elsewhere, that perhaps on his deathbed or perhaps after his demise, Gandhi got his due for the monumental and pioneering work that he's done in the country on diatoms? Even though before meeting him, I started working on diatom. Actually, after meeting and after talking to him and after like, you know, reading his notes and all, I kind of reinvented myself with respect to diatoms. Previously, I was like some kind of obsessed uh, child with, uh, you know, towards a toy, the army that was diatom. So later his discussion and his notes and his collections made me to reinvent my interest with diatoms. So after that only, I my first publication on diatom was about Gandhi's first new species. So I just kind of re-described that particular species. Unfortunately, for the first time, my name appeared in a diatom specific journal in Gandhi's uh, obituary. So I decided that, you know, this is the place I'm going to start. I'm going to uh, tell the world who he is and what he have done. So I wrote two obituary, one in current science, and then I wrote one more to diatom specific people a journal called Item Research, which coming from UK, one of my collaborator, David Williams, you see, he said like, he was making it more on like list out all the species, what Gandhi have done. So I was shocked that time I shocked, like he have literally described 300 new species to, to science, which is huge number. And in that same period, other Indians barely described what, a dozen species? maybe dozen species and then like few like maybe 20 30 or something like that only another person was tvdc achari from madras university he described some species but even till date though any species will be valid if it is connected with the collection so if i am describing a new species of plant it is valid as long as that collection exists so that herbarium sheet exists or the alcohol preserved animal specimen exists so if that Types, we call it as type specimen. If that specimen is not there, it is not valid. So even though there are so many other people described from India, from Madras University and like in the north part of country also many people describe, nothing is connected with the specimens. So in entire Indian subcontinent, only Gandhi's 300 species are connected with the slides or samples. So I decided that, you know, I am going to, these all the specimens were described in 50s, 60s. So I am going to, relook into there we know only by the hand drawing so i'm going to relook this and i'm going to re-describe this species so i wrote all my paper i have many papers on revisiting gandhi species and i'm doing that now and it will take at least another 20 30 year to complete all his 300 species to look because it's it's a monumental work he have done and unfortunately we lost many of his correspondence and his notes if he had those things, it would have been many, it would have been very good to, you wow. know, interpret what he was thinking and things like that. Karthik, I guess even when you started your work on diatoms in India, you might have been a fairly lonely researcher in this space, right? Even though you had some really amazing and supportive mentors. How is the field looking in 2020? Are there now several researchers working on these fascinating organisms? Are there still very few? Globally, there are, say, maybe 400, 500 people, diatomists are there. But if you say active researchers, I would say like 100, 120. They are active researchers who describe many species of diatoms. So in India, in, in our lab, we have a lot of students who work on diatoms. And uh, we describe species like, you know, it's a, it's a very untouched field. Actually, I want to mention here, India's first studied microorganism are diatoms. So the first diatom work appeared in 1854 by Ehrenberg. 
very famous uh, European microbiologist. He got samples from different part of the country. So why I want to mention here is the India's first study microorganisms or diatoms. Even though it's a first study, the work on diatoms are very limited. So now many students and like many faculties are also started work on diatoms and from different part of the country. People are working on application of diatoms in wastewater treatment, application of diatoms in uh, medical applications and forensic, of course, which is very well known. And we also make a point that, you know, we train people very frequently as long as we don't have a collection, permanent collection. So the science will die once the person who working when he super innovates or he retires. So that science also dies. So we need to have a permanent collection and people associated with that. As long as the collection exists, our science can be, you know, attached with that. Like, for example, like herbarium. So some of the India's herbariums are there for like last 200 years. So people come and go. The herbarium will make sure there are research in this. So likewise, we need to also increase our appreciation for collection. And institutionalize this kind of work in the process. Yeah, exactly. Karthik, thank you so much for joining me on BIC Talks and telling us so much about these fascinating organisms as well as this amazing mountain of a man, H.P. Uh, Gandhi, and the truly spectacular work that he did in his lifetime. And it's really great that you were in a position to bring his work to and, and breathe new life into it. And I'm hoping that a lot more people will be following in those same footsteps. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Pawan. Thank you for listening in till the end. Please share this episode with a friend on social media, WhatsApp or anywhere else. It would mean the world to us. And in case you're listening via iTunes or Apple Podcasts, please leave us a rating and a review. Subscribe to BIC Talks on email or your favorite podcast app and don't miss out on future episodes. This episode of BIC Talks has Gaurav Krishna as our sound engineer with support from S. Sarvanaraj and Lekha Naidu. And the accompanying episode artwork was made by Chandni Venkataraman. Thank you for listening to this episode of BIC Talks. This podcast can be accessed on our website, bangaloreinternationalcenter.org, as well as on any of your favorite podcast platforms. Tune in for new episodes every week and do subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our Facebook, Twitter and Instagram pages to stay informed on our latest updates.